Hi folks, Tailspin Fox here. How about if I take you for a ride in my Quest Air Venture and I'll give you the inside scoop on what it's like to fly this high performance amateur built aircraft. My Venture will cruise at about 235 knots at 10,000 feet, burning about 13 and a half gallons per hour and has a range of over 900 nautical miles. With a stall speed of 63 knots and a maximum speed of 250 knots, it has a speed ratio of almost 4 to 1 and that is pretty remarkable for a light aircraft. We are here in Los Alamos, New Mexico today with a field elevation of 7,200 feet on a cool morning and the density altitude is already over 8,000 feet, so you're going to see how this baby performs at higher altitudes. As we line up on runway 9 for a takeoff to the east, we are headed up towards Taos, New Mexico to do a little air work, including cruising at high speed, steep turns, stalls, and slips. Then we will head back to Los Alamos for a landing. Flying the Venture is a thrill and a lot of fun to boot. I hope you will enjoy the ride and learn a few things about this remarkable airplane in the process. As we line up on the runway, we're going to use a little trick that will help us get into the air a little quicker. What we do is point the aircraft a little to the right to help compensate for all the torque that the 280 horsepower Continental IO550G is going to make as we start the takeoff roll. We need about 30 knots before we have enough rudder to keep the airplane aligned on the center line. So by offsetting the nose a little to the right and allowing the torque to pull us back to the center line while we hold full right rudder, we should end up pretty close to the center line by the time we hit our takeoff speed of 90 knots. This minimizes the use of differential braking for steering, so it only takes about 2,000 feet of this 6,000 foot runway for this high density altitude takeoff. Initially, we see about a thousand feet per minute climb rate with the gear and flaps down, but once we clean up the airplane, we'll see about 2,000 feet per minute or better at our best climb rate speed of 130 knots. Okay, I flew about 50 miles up to Taos to warm up the engine, and it only took about 13 minutes from takeoff back in Los Alamos. The Venture is a real time machine. I turned around and headed south following the Rio Grande Valley at 13,600 feet with an average ground speed of about 235 knots. The winds at altitude today are light and out of the north at about 5 knots, so our true airspeed is about 230 knots. I've adjusted the mixture so the engine is running about 50 degrees lean of peak and burning about 11.5 gallons per hour. The Continental IO550G is quite happy running lean of peak with its tuned induction system and while this results in a slight power reduction, the engine operates very smoothly and efficiently with the cylinders running about 30 degrees cooler than at rich of peak settings. At this altitude, I'm showing about 21 inches of manifold pressure, and about one inch of that is due to the ram air. The Venture can carry about 54 gallons of fuel, and at this burn rate, it has a maximum range of over 1,000 nautical miles. I normally plan on a range of 750 miles, and that leaves me with at least an hour reserve. When I'm flying cross country at high altitude and in smooth air, I usually start a cruise descent about 100 miles out to give me time to go down and slow down. Traveling along at four nautical miles a minute, you really chew up ground in a hurry, so it makes sense to give yourself plenty of room for the descent. Another thing to keep in mind is that it's pretty easy to exceed 250 knots in the Venture, and you need to be mindful of that speed limit below 10,000 feet MSL. I also like to keep the cylinders reasonably warm in a descent, and over 300 degrees where practical for engine longevity until I at least get slowed down to pattern speeds. Right now though, I want to lose about 3,000 feet set up for some maneuvers, so I'm going to set up a 1,000 foot per minute descent rate and leave the power where it is. This should give you an idea of how quickly the Venture builds speed in a cruise power descent. It's not to say that you can't get down a lot quicker in a Venture if you want to. Slow the Venture down enough to get the gear and flaps down, and the drag will triple, allowing you to hit descent rates of up to 3,000 feet per minute if required. We are quickly approaching the town of Española, which is located at the confluence of the Rio Grande and Chama rivers. Española has a rich history, and has been a trade center for surrounding communities in northern New Mexico for hundreds of years. It also has a quiet little public use airport that is used by folks to visit the area and by local pilots for training and practice. You can see that the Venture picks up speed in a hurry with this descent rate. 
Right now we're coming up on 278 knots or about 320 miles per hour as we stabilize the descent rate. There's already time to start slowing down for some maneuvers. Next, I'll show you what steep turns, stalls, and slips look like in a venture. I've done some clearing turns and slowed the venture down to 150 knots indicated airspeed for some maneuvers. To begin with, let's try a 60 degree bank turn to the left and then to the right. Steep turns show you a lot about how an aircraft handles as well as how proficient the pilot is. The venture has excellent handling characteristics, so if the steep turn isn't perfect, it's the pilot, not the plane. One of the challenges in a steep turn in a high performance aircraft like the venture is to accurately hold your altitude with all the excess energy that the aircraft has. Slight pitch variations can turn into hundreds of feet of altitude gain or loss in just a few seconds, so accurate pitch control is really important. You also want to hold a constant bank angle and keep the ball centered as you go around the turn. Here the Venture really helps you because it's very stable on a turn and does a really good job of holding its bank angle and staying coordinated pretty much all by itself. Another thing that helps you with the steep turn is the 10 to 1 aspect ratio of the Venture wing. This minimizes the induced drag in the turn so the Venture holds its speed better. In these steep turns I'm not adding any power in the turn and as you can see the Venture comes out of the turn with very little speed loss. The Venture does use up a lot of territory in a turn at high speed and this is because the turn radius for a given bank angle increases as the speed squared. You tend to see this when a new pilot used to flying lower speed aircraft is first learning to fly the pattern in the Venture. They have a tendency to make steeper bank turns so the turn radius looks like what they're used to. There's nothing wrong with this, but as the bank angle goes up, so does the stall speed and this is something to pay attention to when maneuvering aggressively or doing pattern work. Back-to-back -back steep turns are a little more challenging because the entry and exit to the turn produces the biggest trim changes. The Venture handles these types of turns quite well and I think it's mostly because of the crisp handling and the fact that the speed stays pretty constant through the turns even with no power adjustment. Watch my left hand and see how little control moment is required for these turns and you'll get an idea of how solid the Venture is in this type of maneuver. Next up, I'll be doing a couple of power off stalls with the flaps and gear up, and then a stall while in a slip, followed by a stall in a skid. The Venture wing incorporates drooped leading edges in the outboard sections of the wing that help to keep that portion of the wing flying, and the flap rods working even after the inboard section of the wing is stalled. There are also two leading edge slots in each wing that act as stall fences at high angles of attack. The result is amazingly docile stall characteristics for a 23,000 series airfoil with a relatively high wing loading. Because the outboard section of the wing keep flying, the flap rounds remain effective and that gives you the ability to roll the aircraft left and right to facilitate a stall recovery. This amazing wing design was a result of research conducted by NASA and Quest Air during the development of the venture. Okay, I've slid the Venture down and trimmed it for my normal final approach speed of 90 knots to demonstrate a couple of stalls. As I said before, power off stalls in the Venture with gear and flaps up are amazingly docile. There's a defined break and a slight roll, but recovery by relaxing back pressure on the stick is almost instantaneous. The Venture stalls at 68 knots flaps up at gross weight. Accounting for altitude and wind, that's pretty close to the 74 knot ground speed shown in the video. Here you see the stall break and the aircraft pitch back to level with an altitude loss of less than 100 feet. The 15 degree roll to the left is easily corrected by using the flaperons to roll level. Now I'm going to repeat the maneuver with a little more right rudder this time and get the same result except this time the roll is to the right and once again it is easy to recover by simply relaxing stick pressure and rolling level with the flapper runs. Next I'll demonstrate a stall while in a slip. I bank to the right and then use opposite rudder to maintain a forward slip. The ball is off to the right so I know the wing opposite the ball will stall first causing the aircraft to roll to the left. Once again the Venture recovers by relaxing the stick pressure and rolling level. Altitude loss is less than 200 feet. Finally I'm going to show you a stall in a skidding left turn. 
I enter the skid by banking to the left and then adding more left rudder than is required causing the ball to slide out to the right. You can tell when I add the extra rudder because the turn rate increases. This situation can develop on a base to final turn if a pilot is worried about overshooting final and tries to rudder the airplane around to line up with the runway. If a stall occurs, the wing opposite the ball will stall first and in this case it will be the wing that is already down. The result can be a spin entry and at pattern altitudes this is bad news. In this skid, when the venture stalls, it rolls left another 35 degrees in the direction of the wing that is down already but quickly recovers by relaxing stick pressure and rolling level using the flaperons. Next, I want to show you a forward slip in the venture while I'm in a descent and headed back to the airport. I'm going to bank to the right and apply enough left rudder to keep the airplane headed towards the airport. This is called a forward slip since I'm not turning in either direction while I'm in the slip. The venture is quite controllable in a forward slip, but the slip doesn't produce very much additional drag. My descent rate only increased 300 feet per minute before I ran out of rudder to counter the flaperons. This is seldom a problem, however, because dropping the gear creates more than enough drag when you need to get down in a hurry. I'm entering a right downwind for runway 27 at Los Alamos. That is because you can't fly a left downwind due to the restricted area immediately to the south of the airport. The restricted area is there to keep aircraft away from the high explosive activities that are regularly conducted at the nearby National Laboratory. In addition, Los Alamos has a one-way in, one-way out airport with all landings to the west and all takeoffs to the east because of the mountains just to the west. It's fairly common to take off or land downwind at this airport because of this. If you look down and to the right, you can see a 1,700-foot long emergency landing field in the bottom of the canyon. I've now slowed the venture down to 90 knots and I'm lowering the landing gear. You can lower the landing gear or flaps at up to 170 knots but most venture pilots lower them at 130 knots or less because it is a lot easier on the gear doors and actuating mechanisms. I lowered the flaps just before entering the pattern to help me slow down and also to give me a little more stall margin. The venture stalls at around 63 knots, power off with the flaps and gear down. I'm going to extend my downwind to give me plenty of time on final approach because things happen fast in a venture, especially at high altitude where the ground speeds are higher. Okay, I have to be honest, what you're about to see is not very pretty. It is, however, a learning opportunity, so here goes. My downwind was not wide enough, and combined with the crosswind from the right, I didn't have enough room to fly a normal rectangular pattern, but I tried to anyway. As I turned base, I realized it was going to be a short one, because I was too close to the runway. I should have broken off the approach, or simply continued the turn from downwind all the way to final. Instead, I tried to fly a very short base. The result was that I ended up having to make a steep turn to final and my entry was not very well coordinated. I had plenty of stall margin, but that really isn't the point. The point is that I demonstrated a rushed turn to final because of the approach wasn't set up properly and destabilized the approach in the process. There you have it, a clear demonstration of what not to do in any airplane, let alone a venture. I'm now on final and correcting for the crosswind. I'll be shooting for a touchdown just past the numbers because I don't want to use up too much of the runway. If you look down at the buildings in front of the runway, you will see the venture shadow and get a feel for our ground speed at this altitude, which is about 15% higher than it would be at sea level. I'm now correcting for the crosswind from the north with the right slip and thinking about my flare. There's the flare and then the touchdown. We touch down at 90 knots ground speed, or 74 knots indicated airspeed, and are chewing up runway pretty fast. Once on the ground, the venture doesn't slow down very quickly. This is because it doesn't have much aerodynamic drag, and because the venture uses small, high-pressure tires that don't have much rolling friction. At this altitude, the venture will roll 7,500 feet before stopping if you don't use any braking. So I get on the brakes fairly quickly to get us slowed down for a turn off at Bravo that is 4,500 feet down the runway. Venture pilots know that tire and brake maintenance is particularly important on this aircraft because a failure of either one can be a real problem. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a few things about the Quest Air Venture. It truly is an efficient, high-speed aircraft and a thrill to fly. Take care and fly safe.